applied to actors. We should we should solve the actors. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, that's all right. 
，也是就是用那个 label data， 就是和这个没有关系。这个是因为你知道这个数字以后，但是它只有百分之五十。这个是没有关系的，这个没有任何关系，只是你现在偷偷会的偷偷会的有些有些问题，它这个是这个是在在不是吗？不是吗？我们这个是，它这里边特别了，就是这个，就它不让你使用那个 machine learning data， 然后这个是。One of these three is not correct. Which one is it? Also, you can say that because it's 30% going there, uh, more than the 
and go in here. But if you did execute first, like, um, would it be having the same result? Um, no. Oh, no. I mean, <laughs> I don't think any of them are going to be dramatically far apart, yeah. but you'd, have a, you'd get a slightly different result. Now we got the. Is this one right here? Okay. Uh, reciprocal. We don't have the correct answer up on the board. See if we can figure out the correct answer. I need somebody with a calculator to help me. So if we have this, if we have the correct model up on the board. Um, do you want? To come on up and we'll we'll try to get to the correct answer together. Everybody know what this stands for? Really? Where's the C? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Thirty-six. 
one something. One something. Then zero. Yeah. Okay. So now we'll take that number, thirty six one two seven zero times point three. Going back to this equation. Going back to this equation. I won't, um, I'm going to go on, but I won't erase this for the next break if you haven't have done challenges and ethical issues. As always, the method you choose is based on cost and effect. I think we've seen here that the differences are not substantial. They go from 120 to 118 approximately. So there are differences. And believe me, if you're getting more, you want it to be less. But you need to make sure that you're choosing a method that really matters at the end of the day. And again, this method gets dramatically harder as you add service departments. You need to have an allocation basis that makes sense. Um, 
but it's all about incentives. At the end of the day, managers get to do a lot of this management accounting stuff so that managers are doing the right thing for the strategy of the company. As we've talked about normal allocation, you want to use budgets rather than actuals. But let's just say there were three product departments and one of them went out of business. Or production departments and one of them stopped using resources. They, they outsourced it or something. The other managers would just get a bigger piece of the pie um, if, 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 if they were no longer allocating among three if they used actuals. That's not fair. Allocation, you know, they're, they're then being allocated from their service departments a much higher percentage. And that's, you know, how is the manager supposed to do anything about that? They didn't decide whether, you know, the company is going to outsource um, painting to a third party or not. And then here, another important point is, as you're allocated, let's say, from IT, and you say, you know what, I could go outside if I wanted to and get a lower IT course cost myself. So you start to create management decisions. Do, do you let departments create a competitive environment with their internal resources versus the, the real world? And you let them say, you know what? I know the external cost. I'm not paying a dime more than the external cost. And then that kind of um, messes up the whole allocation process. Because quite often, internal shared services are not as efficient as an outside company. There's a reason why people use ADP for payroll. They could do it more efficiently than you do it yourself. Why doesn't Goldman use ADP for payroll? Or maybe point out. Why didn't they? Not enough zeros in the system. <laughs> <laughs> ethical issues, and these are two very important ethical issues that may be important to your company and something you want to look at. The first, cost allocation, you can start three different methods, three different numbers. The net effect is how much gets allocated to end products. Now, if those end products, some of which are sold to the government, and some of which are sold to private industry. Let's say you sell to private industry at a fixed price with a nice profit margin. You sell to government at a cost plus price. So which allocation method are you going to use? The one that allocates the most to the government, to the government's product. So you could do cost plus, and you'll get a higher price. So there are ethical issues on how you allocate the allocation methodology and customers will want to know that they want to know that you're doing it consistently and fairly and regulatory agencies will look into that because it does have impact on outside entities not just you know, internal management process and the second one very important if you're able to allocate across um, com country boundaries, across borders, again, you would want to increase your cost associated with products going to high tax rated countries so that the profits are less. In, so that you pay, since they're high tax rate, you pay off your profits. You want to minimize your profits in those high tax rate companies, countries, so um, you get paid more tax treatment. And this is um, at least two companies, one from this class and the other class, and maybe more, do this. Legally, legal, as long as you do it fairly and consistently. Um, but you there are some companies that do serious business in the U.S. and pay close to zero tax because we have a high tax rate. They want to get those profits elsewhere. So 
why they talk, you know, the Democratic Republican argument, both moving in the same direction. I think Alex Martin had to go up 35 or 50 percent. The Democrats are saying, take it down to 28. Republicans say that's not enough, take it down to whatever. Both feel like they need to take it down, tweak the profiteer, increase revenues by having a lower tax. Okay, second half of this chapter. We'll go a little bit faster than the first half. It's important, but not as um, we're not as focused on it. Yes, joint product. When you yield more than one product from a common input, that's yeah. called a joint product process. Oil, crude oil is a good example. You start off with crude oil out of the ground, and you create gasoline, you create heating oil, you create kerosene, you create asphalt, you create a lot of things. You um, to slaughter a cow, you create good cuts of meat, you create bad cuts of meat, you create awful, I don't know what awful is, in, inside, O-F-F-A-L. So you create different products from a single raw material. And so joint process, product process. It's a process of allocating joint products. Some products are different cuts of meat, they're called products. And some products are what we call byproducts. That's the awful. Relatively small value compared to the other products. Get rid of them, but at a at a lower value. And the chief characteristic of joint product is the process of taking this joint raw material and turning it into a series of products is kind of inseparable. You can't say it goes to one product or the other. It doesn't go to the loin or the. It's inseparable up to a point. After that point, there may be some additional processing. That one product needs, you know, getting turning the remnants of oil into asphalt has some other things that happen after separation. Um, but there are joint costs that need to be allocated among the products. And that's what we're focused on. How do you allocate the joint costs? And how many different ways do you think we can do this? It's probably infinite, but how many are we going to go through? Three. Three. Point where they definitionally the point where you can now do separate things for each of the products is called the split off point. And until that point, you can't make a, di a differentiation between the products. After the split off point, the costs are usually called separable costs. And the three methods are physical units, the easiest. Sales value and split off is a little more complicated. And net realizable value, just a little more complicated. Okay, we won't use the cow, we won't use oil, we'll use tuna fish. So you have 14,000 pounds of tuna, unprocessed value of $16,000. Then you have a split off point where you take the best part and you turn it into two fillets, a high value product. You take the less and you turn it into canned tuna, 2,000 pounds go there, 3,000 pounds go there. So that's only 10,000 out of your original 14,000. The other 4,000 pounds is dry byproduct scrap and waste. We're going to change this later, but for now. So 10,000 out of the 14,000 are useful. You could sell the fillets at two twenty a pound and the canned tuna at a dollar sixty five a pound. Okay? So how do 
how do you allocate the cost of getting it? First, we did the fiscal unit method. Simply, percentage of units. Take the cost by the percentage of units. This stuff, you're assuming, is worth nothing. You don't give this a value. So 2,000 and 8,000, 20% and 80%, but you ignore the stuff that was worth nothing. So the total cost based upon units is 3,212,800 for $1.60 a pound. $1.60 a pound is cost. Between the raw materials and whatever, you need to do to get it ready for store. Is this fair? that up to pull it off, it, it might take more money. You have to be a little more careful in recutting. Um, so it might have cost, it more, cost more money. And you know what? Remember the value, right? The fillets are worth two dollars and twenty cents, and this is worth a dollar sixty-five now. But what if this is a little bit higher? This is what if this is two dollars and twenty cents, and this is I'm sorry, what, what if it was, uh, this cost turned out to be $100.70 a pound rather than $1.60? So you're saying you shouldn't donate the package to them? So it's a little bit unfair to do it this way, just to do it on the units of pounds, because the products aren't worth the same amount. It should be probably done somehow on value. You took the total cost, which started out at sixteen thousand. Took sixteen thousand, the total cost, and you split it twenty percent and eighty percent. Well, you know it has to be twenty percent of the sixteen thousand. So we we have a unit, which gives us. Portion for percentages, but you then take a percentage of the total. Okay, the advantage of the physical units method is easy. It's objective, volume of output. It ignores this event, it ignores the revenue producing capability. And for some products, this is very important. The different products have different measurements. Oil. Can you compare the volume of output of asphalt with oil? One in barrel, the other in whatever asphalt you can measure it. No, pounds of asphalt. That is fun. So, I mean, you sometimes you simply can't even do this. But they're, they're comparing apples and oranges. So the next method, relative sales value at split off. Not dramatically more complicated. So if you take instead of taking the volume of split off, you take the value of split off. However, this is only useful if you have your value at split off. At the point of split off, I don't believe asphalt is yet asphalt. It's some remnant of the oil refining process that then has to be converted into asphalt. So the activity after split off gets you to the end of it. So let's assume now we can. Put our start assuming something. Okay. We know the units at split off given. We know the price at split off. That was given. We therefore know the sales value is split off. A times B. You can 
create a percentage from the value that's split off. So 4,400 divided by 1760 is 25%. 13,200 is 75%. So now, if remember this was 20 and 80 cents in the first example? We're giving more weight to the tuna fillets because they're worth more per pound. So we're weighting them up. Now we go to after here it's the same process. Sixteen thousand total dollars a ton. Split up twenty five seventy five. So it's two dollars and a dollar fifty. So now you have a different, probably a more fair allocation of those original So that says you'll make 20 cents a pound on the fillets and 15 cents a pound on the canteen. Based upon this data. Compared to 60 cents a pound for the fillets and 5 cents a pound for the canteen. So, relatively easy to calculate. Not that hard, right? Um, Costs are allocated according to the product's revenue. That's good. It brings makes it a more fair allocation. Disadvantages, market prices vary. Sometimes it's hard to get your finger on it. You know, thinking about splitting up oil. Sales by the hour. And then you might not be able to do this method because you don't have a value of all your products. This value, this model is good, but imperfect. The next model, net realizable value, is kind of an offshoot of this. Instead of taking the, val the, cost, the value of split off, you essentially have to, because some items may not have a value split off, you take the final value. And if there's some extra work that has to be done between split off and end product. You figure out the cost of that extra work, the separable cost, and you subtract it from the actual value of those products that have separable costs. And then you have kind of what an approximate value at split off. So you go backwards to create values at split off and then you work from there. Let's do an example. Okay, our tuna example, of that 4,000 pounds that we thought were useless, 3,000 of those pounds are going to be used in cat food. So the process is they're looking at grind up the bones and some whatever you do with the cat food. And then those extra costs to get it ready to become cat food is eight, are $850 for that 3,000 pounds, which means that you can sell that cat food for $1.75, which interestingly is more than you're selling the cat food. Mm -hmm. But you had to do more work. But if I was a cat food person, I would buy the cat food. Okay, now we have more information in this example. Okay, so now we have, instead of 10,000 pounds to consider, we have 13,000 pounds. We have those 3,000 pounds of cat food to think about. We have an end price, which you take, you extend price times pounds, and you have your end value, which is 22,850. And we know that there was $850 of additional processing for the cat food. So what you need to do is subtract this eight hundred and fifty dollars additional processing from the end sales value to approximate your sales value at split off. This says that you will be 
net even. If you would have said at split off, the value was four thousand four hundred dollars. This is specifically my case. If you could have sold those three thousand dollars, those three thousand pounds of cat food at that point, but somebody else did the processing, you would have sold it for four thousand four hundred dollars or more at to the fine. Okay, so now you have your values at split off for your three products. You have percents, just based upon these numbers as a percent of the total, 1 to 6 to 20. Numbers work out real nice in this example. And so then you take the 16,000 original cost and allocate it to 20, 6 to 20. You haven't forgotten about the 850. You have to add it back in over here. Figure out the cost per unit of each of your three products. And your cost per unit for your cat food is the amount allocated plus its separable cost, which gets you 45, 4,050. saying that for allocation purposes, here's how we should allocate it. But at the end of the day, you have another 3,000 pounds of stuff that you're going to sell at $1.75. That's after. So you're saying in this analysis, it's crazy.
Remembering that this, the purpose of this exercise is to get your allocation done. You are expecting that you'll make money off of this and this is that pay hundreds of dollars, otherwise you wouldn't do it. And if you could if you could determine the incremental value in some way rather than the initial maximum cost, you know, let's say we know we're going to make in it. Two hundred dollars over say fifty, and that would be a thousand fifty. I guess you could use that number if you so chose to to get back to different percentages. You could do that. I think the point is valid. Anybody understand the point? The point is this analysis. That you're not have, making any cost on the taxes. You're just taking the incremental processing costs, bringing them back, rather than the incremental value you create after a separate cost. And, I, and that's, I, I'm using that increment processing cost to figure out the ratio rather than the incremental value. And that's a value. That's, that's a, a reasonable. So there's a fourth method that we're not going to use. That was a good question. Okay. Do you want to do two of these or no? No. <laughs> you have homework. I don't think you do any more, right? I was only going to do the direct. We're going to do the physical and the relative cells. The NRV is just relative cells with a little bit more work on it. As an example of homework. Okay, take a little break here in your breakout groups. Three different groups of questions for you to think about with your company. Are service department allocations an appreciable component of your company's expenses? Does it matter for your company? Think about what those service departments are in your company. And is this something that you want to be doing some more research on? Secondly, does your company manufacture joint products in some way? It tends to be process companies, not job companies that will do this. And what are some of these joint products to do? And then think about these ethical issues that we talked about briefly, but they're important for some of your companies. Government contracts, international cost transfers, etc. Are these relevant issues to your company? Okay. Because um, you haven't really had a true break, these should take about 10 minutes to go through, and then take another 10 minutes to get back together a quarter hour. And then we're going to do three more chapters. <laughs> said we would. Oh, right. We, uh, we, we could do it. We could do it. We could do it.